If you are on a weight loss journey, as many people are, especially those people who are coming to peaks mm -hmm. and they're doing perhaps one of our challenges, those people who are trying to lose weight will struggle to lose weight without yes. adequate sleep. Because during your nighttime hours, the body is going to go through all of its natural repair processes. It's going to basically regulate all the hormones. And if you're not getting good sleep, you will not lose weight. Your body will feel stressed. The stress on your body will mean it will cling on to fat for dear life mm -hmm. and it won't let it go. You could be eating almost no calories. Yes. You could be eating perfectly. You could be doing everything that you should be doing. You mm -hmm. could have the perfect life. But if you don't sleep, you won't lose the weight you expect. And that for some people is a big kicker because people put so much effort into getting their diet and their exercise and everything correct and they fail to put their attention to sleep and they just don't get the results. And then the, the lack of sleep and the lack of weight loss becomes stressful, so there's more lack of sleep and there's more stress and it's this horribly vicious circle, isn't it? Totally right. And welcome back to The Peaks Life, little bite-sized chunks of wellness wisdom with Lynn Fernie and myself, Mike Warren. Welcome back. Today we're finalising the Peaks formula. We've done P equals EA plus K and today's S. Mm. So just for those who haven't tuned in, maybe the first time you've tuned into the uh, the podcast or the YouTube, we'll do a bit of a recap and then we'll talk to you what the S means and uh, put the whole thing together into the Peaks unique formula. So mm. take us through, Lynn. What's the, what's the P equals EA plus KS all about? So um, P equals EA plus K plus S is all about the set of lifestyle guidelines that... Uh, we use in the peaks life and essentially it brings outstanding and amazing results in terms of energy the way your body looks um, your weight um, how you feel your mind your sleep and what they all stand for everything, everything basically <laughs> and that just gives you everything that you need to live life to the full and be the best version mm. of yourself that you possibly can be so whether mm. you want you know career benefits um, or whether you want to be able to live life to the full with your family and give mm. the best of yourself Absolutely. to your family, then the Peaks formula mm. you know, will give you everything that you need to achieve that. So, Hence the word Peaks, which is peak performance, whatever it looks like in your world. That's exactly mm. right. Mm. So P is, is all about performance. Yes. So it's about taking all those things that we just said and looking at your own life and deciding what is it that you want to be the best version of yourself mm. for. Is it career? Is it just general life? Is it because you want to be the best mom or the best dad, um, or because you're a student? So whatever it is, then you know define what performance level yes. you are, you know you're looking to achieve. Mm. And we've got ways that we we work through that, and you'll find that in the episode all about P for performance. Absolutely. We've then got EA, and EA stands for energizing and activating the mind and body. It's a bit of a mouthful, um, but what that's all about, it's about basically just fine tuning everything mm. in order to get your body working the best it possibly can mm, mm. and to get your mind working as best again as it can and that's within the all you know the, the limitations that you've got absolutely but it's pushing the boundaries to achieve you know a hundred percent the absolute maximum so we use routines we use routines that enable us to get up on a morning and supercharge the day. We use routines that wind us down for sleep in the evening. And then we use various different techniques like amazing breathing routines that allow us to get lots of oxygen into the body that mm -hmm. generates energy. And we use cold exposure routines and techniques that again allow us to boost our immune system mm -hmm. and get amazing energy. So that mm -hmm. you know you're going to power through your entire day. Absolutely. So that's the EA. Yes. The K is a really important one. They're, in fact, they're all super important. And, and I struggle to put any one of these first. Um, but K underpins a lot of things because K is the ketogenic lifestyle. And in the ketogenic lifestyle, we're looking at basically fueling our body with foods that nature intended, which means whole foods, natural foods. It means predominantly animal based in our world. And it means a high fat, low carbohydrate diet. So we're get, getting rid of all of the, the sugar, the processed foods, the junk foods. Clean eating. We are eating clean. Yes. We're making sure that we're not having toxic oils and fats. And what we're doing is we're putting in some really mm. nourishing mm. foods that are nutrient rich, nutrient dense, 
that give us everything we need to be again in, in tip top condition and we pair that with some ketogenic fasting mm. which means that we you know hold off when we eat so we have periods of time each day where we we don't eat and then periods of time where we eat and, and we compress that eating window so instead of grazing all day we're actually getting amazing benefits right deep down at a cellular level mm. so we're minimizing the packaging the processing and the artificially sweetened food and getting mm. back to that nice nice clean way of eating exactly. all right the last one is a little bit different so we're now at s um, and it's different because it's one of those areas that is, a, is an absolute focus now mm. but five years ago it wasn't part of a wellness formula right. and it's something that we weren't doing proactively so practically we're going out there and doing movement we're doing breathing we're doing cold but this one is unique because it's something we've all done. Mm. Every single person does this every day, but we haven't focused on it or given it the love that it deserves. So tell us about S for sleep. S for sleep. Now, <clears throat> you know, I've got to say this one is, <laughs> I reckon... A game changer. It is a game changer. Yes, it it is. truly is. Yeah. And I reckon this is the most important. Because mm. mm. I think you can put You just said it here, wasn't all that important, but I this said, one I is. I said I find it hard <laughs> to prioritise, but the reality well, I think recently is... recently you've decided. Yeah, well, that's, let, let me tell yeah, you a story. Good idea. So we are talking about S for sleep, mm. and I do think that this is more important than EA plus K together. Mm. I think sleep trumps all. And I think you can do as much as you want to with your diet and with your movement and, yes. and everything. And you won't get the benefits that you deserve Yes. until you actually get sleep right now here, here's my story so i give no regard whatsoever to sleep um, a sleep I, cowgirl I, I was a workaholic yes and so you know as a busy executive and you know going back for most of my career i spent my life as a corporate mm. you know I, I was up at the fairly senior levels in some large companies and a lot of demands and a lot of pressure not only that i loved what i did i loved my work and so my days would go something like get up at probably about five o'clock um, start work you know so hit the computer because i was running international teams so i had teams across all time continents zones. and all time zones yes. which meant that when i woke up on a morning my inbox was full because my team in another in another time zone had been working during my sleeping hours so i get up in the morning the minute i woke up literally you know eyes sort of stuck together because i was <laughs> tired um, i get straight on my mobile phone on my laptop and i'd start answering emails and i'd be straight off trying to clear that inbox out I'd then zoom into the office, I'd do, do you know, maybe an hour and a half, I'd zoom into the office, I'd be at the office for seven o'clock in the morning, and I'd work through at the office maybe until seven o'clock in the evening. I'd then go home, and I would literally wolf down some dinner, and I would then continue on. I'd do my night shift, because mm. again, there were people across the world in my team coming online. Yes. So I'd have telephone conferences, I'd have video conferences, I would again be doing emails and also, you know, pushing things out to my team for the for the coming days and, and mm. weeks. And I would literally work through until two or even three in the morning. So I and I'm not I'm absolutely not exaggerating mm. when I say that there was a particular three years, three years when I was really building my career and I was building my team where I worked flat out and I had literally three or four hours tops mm. of sleep every night for about three years. Mm. And I was so proud of that. Yes. I, I used to say, say yeah. to everybody, the badge I don't of need honor. sleep. Yes. I had my badge of honor, I yes. tell you. Yes. I don't need sleep. Yes. I can survive on, you know, three hours sleep a night. And people used to be like, wow. Yeah, it used to be impressive. Seriously? The badge of honor used to be quite impressive. The old Margaret Thatcher days of sleeping four hours a night. But people were impressed. People were like, well, I don't know how you do it. You're amazing. Yeah. Whereas these days, it's not amazing. People go, that is going to kill you. Well, you know, and, and again, I'll, I'll jump forward to, mm. I'll cut right to the end of the story. I did that for many, many years. I did it for three years intensely. And even then, even when I got rid of that period of my life and moved on, I still probably only got five or six hours a night. Yep, yep. And I used to say to people, I don't need more. Mm. Because I basically got so used to not sleeping. I was a habitual non-sleeper. Mm, mm. um, I would say, if I go to bed before midnight, I won't sleep. Um, yes. If I stay in bed for yep. six hours and I do that night on night, after a couple of nights I won't be able to sleep or I'll wake early. And these were the, you know, the, 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 the myths I used mm -hmm. to tell myself. And so I basically trained my body 
to not sleep. But as a result, I was chronically sleep deprived. You know, I, I used to be tired all the time. Yes. I'd drag myself to the gym, I'd do my daily life. But I was generally very tired all day, every day. And that became the new norm. So mm. I normalized how tired I felt. Now skip forward to today, where I religiously go to bed early, apart from the odd social event. I get up at the same time. I still get up early. I get up at six o'clock, mm. but I get a good solid seven and a half to eight hours in bed, which usually gives me six hours of quality sleep. Yeah. The difference in how I feel is amazing. I feel outstanding. I can't even begin to describe mm -hmm. how good I feel. And I know if I go through a week where I haven't had good sleep for whatever reason, I start to feel a yeah, little absolutely. bit, you know, yeah. not so good. But everything, my, my skin, my energy levels, my appetite, everything improves. Your sense of humor is improved. Like, no, I don't have one of those. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it, that's become the, the new norm for you. So for those people tuning in, there might be a, a group of people who are still going through that process of not giving sleep the love mm. it deserves. We talked about sleep deprivation, and mm. we didn't know a lot about the effects of deprived sleep. Mm. We now do. And there are Absolutely. some significant health impacts when someone's deprived of sleep. So let's run through those. And let's scare mm. the heck out of those people who think it's okay mm. just to ignore sleep. Yeah, and I will say for those people like me, and there's many of you out there, many executives, mm. busy professionals, busy moms, mm. there's always one more thing to do before you go to sleep. There is, yes. These are the reasons why you shouldn't do that. Yes. And yeah. I battle with this on a daily basis. There is always an email to reply to. Always. There's always social media, mm. always somebody who, you know, we're helping mm, and absolutely. we'd love to, to do a little bit more. And yeah. every single day, my natural instinct is to do the work. Because you're a fixer. Because I'm a, you're a fixer, fixer you're a I'm a reply. workaholic. Yeah. And yeah. I love it, I love it, I love what we yes, do. But? But every day I have to make this really conscious effort to put my health first. Mm, mm. It's not about putting sleep first. No, putting your health first. Putting your health first. So and we've, first got, and we've got some hacks too, hacks later on. We that, do. That for those people who are saying, how do I switch off? How do I increase, you know, improve my sleep? Mm. So first of all, if I'm sleep deprived, what am I likely to suffer from or get impacted by and um, you know i could spend hours on this i really could so i'm just <laughs> going to give my eight or nine or ten eight, eight nine ten issues so, so the first one is if you are on a weight loss journey as many people are especially those people who are coming to peaks mm -hmm. and they're doing perhaps one of our challenges those people who are trying to lose weight will struggle to lose weight without yes. adequate sleep because during your nighttime hours the body is going to go through all of its natural repair processes. It's going to basically regulate all the hormones. And if you're not getting good sleep, you will not lose weight. Your body will feel stressed. The stress on your body will mean it will cling on to fat for dear life. Mm -hmm. And it won't let it go. You could be eating almost no calories. Yes. You could be eating perfectly. You could be doing everything that you should be doing. You could mm -hmm. have the perfect life. But if you don't sleep, you won't lose the weight you expect. And that for some people is a big kicker because people put so much effort into getting their diet and their exercise and everything correct and they fail to put their attention to sleep and they just don't get the results. And then the, the lack of sleep and the lack of weight loss becomes stressful so there's more lack of sleep and there's more stress and it's this horribly vicious circle, isn't it? Totally right, it yeah. really is. Yeah. And this is a big one. And until you experience good sleep yes. and the benefits, you may not you realize, realize how big an effect. Cool. And unfortunately, if you are overweight, especially if you're obese, you may have other challenges. You may have sleep apnea. Mm. You may actually have difficulty sleeping. You know, if you've got fat around your neck, it may stop you sleeping. Mm. So there are physical issues that you may have to address to if you're sleep. trying to lose weight yep. because you're overweight um, to get that sleep that you need. Cool. Messes up the hormones. It completely messes up your hormones. So again, <laughs> If you're a busy female executive, and I'll talk about the guys in a second, if you're a busy female executive, especially if you're in that sort of 45 or even 40 to 55 age bracket, you'll already see that you've got variations in your hormones. Mm -hmm. So what you'll find is your female sex hormones, your estrogen, progesterone, and your adrenal glands, um, which produce adrenaline, are all going to start getting a bit mixed up mm. if you're not sleeping well. So those poor little adrenal glands that are pushing out all of the, the important hormones for you as a woman 
they really do suffer if you don't get enough sleep. And we've heard the typical term burnout and adrenal mm -hmm. fatigue. What it essentially does is it you've got um, hormones and an axis in the body called the HPA axis and it throws that out of kilter. Mm. So it's just like a set of scales where you've tipped the scales in the wrong direction. Yeah. If you're not getting sleep, you're tipping your hormone scales in the wrong direction. Yeah. The same goes true for, for men, but men possibly don't notice it in the same way. What women notice is mood swings, they feel a bit cranky, they have the real ups and downs, they might see menopausal symptoms like hot flashes. A lot of that can be coming from lack of sleep and the women get in a vicious cycle because they get a night, night, you know, nighttime sweat or a hot flash. That means I don't sleep very well. Yeah. Then because I haven't slept very well, <laughs> my hormones go further out of whack. Sleep very well, yeah. And so it continues. Yes, yes. So you've really got to work hard to get through that. Mm. Um, men suffer from low testosterone when mm. they don't sleep enough. Yep. And again, we know all the problems that come from, from low testosterone, you know, failure to build muscle, issues with sex, all sorts of things. Mm. So, you know, it's really important for everybody from the sex hormones perspective. Yep. The other set of hormones that are really important are the stress hormones. Of course, yes. Because what we do in our body is we basically produce adrenaline to keep us awake and we produce on a morning cortisol to wake us up. So if we're not sleeping and you know we're not sort of going to bed and sleeping enough and then getting up at the right time, then our body's gonna be dysregulated. Our mm, circadian mm. rhythm gets out of whack. All those different hormones are produced at the wrong times, yep. they're producing the wrong quantities. And so what it essentially happens is we place stress on the body. Now that stress on the body, it's going to do all sorts of things like it's going to increase your weight, so you're going to gain weight. Um, you'll struggle to sleep, you won't be able to switch your mind off and your body becomes you know, chronically stressed. Yeah, yeah. So people say the best time to de-stress is when you're asleep. So sleep for stress relief, S you know, sleep for stress management. Yes. One of the best ways to manage your, your stress get, get is get more sleep. So Crazy. it's kind of a bit of a, you know, a little bit of a, a mind to, bend, yeah. but it's a good way to de-stress. Next one's interesting because it's very obvious, but it's so important. It's the, it's the drowsiness and the fatigue you get mm. when you don't sleep. And some of the, it's not the fatigue or the drowsiness, it's the implications of what effect that could have on your body quite similar to having a few drinks mm. but if you're in a particular role or an activity that requires you to be alert there are some significant dangers on there absolutely right so the next one is is basically fatigue yes if you are fatigued you're not going to perform well mm. so think about yourself you're sitting at your desk you're trying to do emails and you know you, you're virtually nodding off because you're so mm. tired you're not going to be as productive but even worse than that, so productivity takes a big hit. Yes. But even worse than that, you're going to put yourself at risk of things like accidents. So yes. as you said, if you're in a, in a role where you actually need to be very, very focused, yep. you need to be alert, you could put yourself in danger. But as simple as driving to work, mm. driving home from work, if Absolutely. you're fatigued, yep. then as you said, there are statistics that show us that sleep deprivation is worse than having a few drinks. Mm. You wouldn't get in your car and you wouldn't get behind the wheel if you'd had four drinks. Mm. But that could be the same level of drowsiness, lack of mental mm. acuity that you experience from chronic sleep deprivation. Or if you did have a few drinks, you'd be breathalyzed and you'd be taken off the road and penalized because you're behind the wheel of a vehicle that can hurt someone. But you're able to jump behind the wheel fully fatigued and have the same level of danger, if not worse. And what we know is that many of the accidents you know, Absolutely. out on the roads today yep. are caused by Fatigue people related. being fatigued and, mm. and drowsy. Mm. So, you know, on a very practical level, this, you know, sleep deprivation kills, it kills directly in accidents. Absolutely. All right, next one, um, it opens up your the predisposition to type 2 diabetes. It does. And, mm. you know, what when you're not sleeping well again because of some of those hormone dysregulations mm -hmm. that we're seeing because your hormones are out of whack yep. then you are exposing yourself to more and more risk of type 2 diabetes and there are some fascinating studies that show that the more sleep deprived you are and the longer it goes on the more your risk for type 2 diabetes increases mm -hmm. and it increases rapidly so even one or two nights of poor sleep will elevate your blood glucose. Wow. When your blood glucose goes up 
and it stays up, then you have to produce more insulin. Yep. Eventually, over time, if your blood sugar stays high, then your body will start to become insulin resistant. And you know, you've pushed yourself into that pre-diabetic state or yes. even diabetic. Yep. So if you're already struggling with obesity or you're overweight, if you're already struggling with your metabolic health, then a, you know, a poor night of sleep can be pushing you over that limit. Yep. Or chronic sleep deprivation, even without those other risk factors, mm. could be enough to give you diabetes. And I think people don't realise that you can get diabetes, I'm not being extreme, mm. you can get diabetes from chronic sleep deprivation. Yeah. And cardiovascular disease. And, you know, and again, all of these things add up, you yep. know, whether it's the metabolic issues, whether it's the type 2 diabetes, um, whether it's simply that your cortisol is elevated, so you've got more stress on your body and yes. your blood pressure's gone up. But all of these factors then lead to a higher risk of cardiovascular disease. Mm. So we're talking about the risk of heart attacks. Yep. We're talking about the risk of things like strokes and those sort of conditions. So, you know, that's, that's a silent killer because you don't yeah. realise that that stress you're placing on the body, the hormones being dysregulated, are affecting your mm. heart mm. and your cardiovascular system. So that's the physical health, and there's also a significant impact on mental health, isn't there? Very much so. Yeah. And again, I think we're only really just realising this. Yeah. The body goes through, the body and the brain, go through a lot of cleansing processes mm. at night. Mm. And we know about the obvious ones. The obvious one is your digestion. Yes. Yeah, so you eat, you put food in, yep. it gets processed during the day, during the night, and quite often a lot of people on a morning will have a bowel movement. Mm. So it's pretty obvious that my body has processed waste mm. overnight and I eliminate it, you know, I expel yep. it on a morning. We don't think about that happening in our brain, but essentially the same process occurs. Yep. When we sleep, the brain shrinks and essentially there is like a fluid that washes through the brain and it takes away parts that are not needed, you mm. know, proteins that are not needed. That, it's a bit like a dishwasher mm. for your brain. Yes. And that dishwashing of your brain happens at night. So think about what I do at home is I you know, get to the end of the night and I pop my dishwasher on, I set it for a time delay of two hours so the noise doesn't wake me up and overnight my dishwasher works its way, works its magic I get up in the morning, I open it up, all my dishes are lovely and sparkling mm. and clean and all the rubbish has gone, all the, the food waste yes. has gone and they smell beautiful. It's exactly what happens in the brain overnight. So all of that dishwashing happens and your brain is refreshed. So if you don't sleep and you're not getting rid of the waste products in the brain, think about what's going to happen. Mm. You are going to be subject to conditions like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease. Mm. You are going to have you know, much higher risk for those. But in addition, you're also going to potentially suffer mental health issues like anxiety, depression, you know, all of those yep. things that basically face us from time to time. Mm. If you're sleep deprived, first of all, you're not going to deal with them as well. And secondly, you're more at risk of them if you're sleep deprived. Mm. So there's a significant list there. Any others you want to add to the list for mental or physical health from, uh, yeah, from sleep deprivation? Oh, I think you know, you've also got the risk of metabolic conditions. I've talked yes. already about type 2 diabetes. Yes. We've talked about heart attacks and strokes. But there's a whole range of other metabolic conditions. In other words, things like cancer. Um, in other words, lots of the, the what we would call the modern day diseases mm. um, and generally our immune systems have been shown and there's a lot of studies coming out on this one, we're shown to be less resistant to bugs, bacteria and viruses wow, okay. if we're sleep deprived. So, you know, if I put two people in a room and I expose them both to a virus and one person gets a good solid quality eight hours of sleep a night, the other person gets a really poor, restless, mm. five hours of sleep a night. The risk of the sleep-deprived person getting that virus and yep. becoming quite a nasty illness mm. is significantly higher. Yes. Like, much, much higher. And then when they get the bug or the illness, their bodies are already under fatigue and, depri and deprived of sleep. So the impact on their bodies is going to be quite significant. Much, much worse. Already, already one step backwards. Yeah, and th I'll give you a really good example. Mm. Is think about mums and dads who've yes. got young kids. Yes. It's well known that your kids' 
you know, bring all the bugs back from oh, school. They do, they do. And the parents get it. Yes. And the parents often are sleep deprived because they're dealing with young kids. They get the interruptions in the night. Yep. Yep. Um, and so they, they are sleep deprived mm. and they are therefore vulnerable. If they were able to get better sleep, they'd be more, then they'd be more resistant yes. to the illnesses Again, that another, you know, the child has. Another vicious circle where the sleep deprived causes something and then that causes more sleep deprivation and it's just a continual vicious circle. Continuing. So we've done our very best to scare people who are tuning in as to why it's really important mm. to give sleep some love, to focus mm. on getting better sleep, both the quality and the quantity of sleep. So if I'm tuning in now thinking, okay, you guys have got me, you've scared the heck out of me. Let's go the other way and let's say, what is good sleep? What, what, what should we be looking for? What are the different types of sleep, the qualities, the quantities? Then some hacks for those people who need to improve their sleep. So tell us about sleep. What's some good stuff? Yeah, so um, I think the key things to know about sleep is there's three basic stages of sleep that we go through. Yes. We've got light sleep. Yep. Um, um, you know, so we're, so we're anything from mar you know marginally awake to dozing to you know very unconscious. That mm -hmm. that is all categorised as light sleep, and it's still important. So we get a lot of focus on the other areas of sleep. We don't downplay light sleep because we're still asleep and our body is still working, and we don't fully understand everything that happens at every point in our sleep cycle. Yep. So light sleep is the first one. The second one is is the opposite in a sense. It's deep sleep. Yes. And deep sleep is when the body repairs itself. So during that deep sleep, if we've exercised in the gym, we're going to see the gains basically when we sleep, and that'll be in deep sleep. If we've damaged our body, so we've got cuts, we've got um, tendon problems, we've got an injury, our body will repair okay. itself. Yep. Yep. If we're sick, Again, our body will repair itself. So it goes through all of those repair processes when we're deeply asleep. Again, for weight, um, weight loss, again, all of that happens during our deep sleep. And deep sleep can be anywhere from maybe 30 minutes up to an hour and a half. So mm. it could account for, say, 25% of your, of your, of your overall, 25, yep. even more. Some people yep. get a bit more. It declines as you age. So the older you are, the harder it is to get that deep sleep. So it's important to establish a really good sleep habit, yes. sleep routine, that you can get deep sleep every mm -hmm. night. So mm -hmm. you think sense. about it, again, you're doing all the important things, but if you don't get any deep sleep, you your body it. can't repair itself. So that's very much about the physical body. Yes. And when we're in deep sleep, it, it is very much, you know, we, we are... I guess at a point where we're very difficult to wake, you know, to wake up. Mm. So if you've ever had that experience of you feel really, you've woken up and you feel really groggy, maybe yeah. an alarm clock's woken you, or you've got to get up for a flight, and you just have that, you just feel sick, you feel physically sick. Mm. That is probably because you were in a super deep sleep, and you're actually very difficult to awaken from that deep sleep. Mm. And there's different levels, but just, I think the main thing to know is deep sleep is the body's time to repair. The last bit, the, th the last um, of our types of sleep is REM sleep. Mm. So this is called rapid eye movement sleep. And REM sleep is really around where the brain you know, does a lot of work. It dreams. Um, it basically goes through all sorts of processes to sort out the day's, um, the day's experiences. It files them. So it's a bit like if you take a computer and you've got all these files in your, in your downloads folder because you've, yeah. you've been sitting all day and you've been downloading from the internet and they all just sit in downloads. And if you just leave them there, downloads gets cluttered and you can't find them because you yeah. don't remember what they're called. Yeah. You know, you'd nev you'll never remember the name. I mean, I, I probably download 50 things a day from the internet. Yes. I wouldn't remember half of them. So what happens overnight is the brain essentially takes each one of those files and it puts it in the right folder. So if you think about your brain doing that, it's gonna take each of the experiences of the day and it's gonna put it in order. It's gonna create the long-term memories that you need especially. It's gonna clear out what's needed, what's not helpful. When you wake up in the morning, sometimes you know you have that feeling of, oh, my brain's really clear. You might have gone to bed and everything felt very cluttered, but you wake up after a good night's sleep and it's all cleared. That's because your brain, during your REM sleep, has sorted everything out. Yeah. So during that REM sleep, you're actually, you're effectively paralyzed. 
Mm. Um, and that stops you enacting your dreams. <laughs> Flipping around, running off. Yes. All sorts of things can happen. <coughs> Crazy stuff. Um, and that's why most people don't sleepwalk. Yes. Um, because during those dreams, they, they can't move about. But it is when the brain is going through its repair processes mm. and its, you know, its various processes. So light sleep, all, you know, we're, we're getting some general good rest. Yes. Deep sleep, the body repairs. And then the REM sleep the mind is going through its work and its right. processes. So that's the quality of sleep, and it's it's ideal, obviously, to get the right balance of REM, deep, and light, mm. and we can track those. So there mm -hmm. is um, devices, whether it's a, a ring or a watch yeah. or a journal, we can track the sleep and get a really good indication of the amount of REM, deep, and light sleep, and then we can tweak that to make sure we get the right amount. That's the quality. What about quantity? Mm. So look, there's lots of advice, there's lots of different opinions out mm. there. I want to pull away from, from absolute guidelines other than to say we should be getting between seven and nine hours sleep is the general guidance. Yes. And if you go back 200 years to probably great grandparents or great great grandparents, they would have been getting eight to nine hours sleep every night. Yep. Typically, we are getting about six hours sleep. So the average American gets anywhere between five and seven hours sleep. Mm -hmm. So we've lost an hour Somewhere. in a couple of hundred years. <laughs> Yes. So generally you want to be getting between, you know, I would say seven and nine hours. For most people, the sweet spot is eight hours. Yep. And everybody varies a little bit in terms of what's best for them. So here's my guidance on listening to your body because you're right, you can track your sleep. And, you know, we do. So we've got um, sleep trackers. Yep. We've got rings. So you watches. can track your sleep. We've got, you know, watches that can do it, phones can do it. So if you're a bit of a gadget person and you like data, you want to measure it and have an actionable plan to improve it, then a really good way to do it is to track your sleep and actually see what's happening. Yes. And then you know what's working and what's not. But if you don't have that luxury, then the easiest thing to do is to, first of all, you know, try and note down how long do you take to go to sleep. Yep. Um, do you wake up without an alarm or do you have to have, you know, a trumpet playing to, <laughs> yes. to wake you up? Yep. Do you snooze the alarm every day because you're still mm. tired? Do you spring out of bed or do you struggle to get mm. up? Do you reach for your first cup of coffee immediately? All of those are, you know, so those are mm. indicators that and maybe it's not as good. Night, yeah. yeah, are you working at night? Are you going to the toilet more than once or twice a night? All of these are issues that can be, you know, that need to be looked at and could indicate you're sleep deprived or you've got a medical condition. Yes. If you're getting good sleep, you're getting good quality sleep, then you should be getting probably around that eight hours. You should be able to go to bed you should be able to fall asleep within about 20 minutes. You should sleep most of the night without interruption and without waking. Yep. You should wake up without an alarm and feel pretty refreshed. And even if you don't spring out of bed, yep. I would normally say to people, within 15 to 20 minutes of actually getting up, you should feel amazing. Mm. You may not the second you get up, I yep. don't. Yep. You know, I wake up and it takes me a few seconds to get my bearings and yep. get up and, and do my bathroom routine. By the time I've come out of the bathroom, I usually feel on top of the world. Mm. Good. <laughs> All right. Won't go there, won't touch that one. No, no. <laughs> so quality and quantity. And then we're talking about some, maybe some hacks because those people tuning in might think, right, this is great. I need more sleep, give sleep some love. I understand the types of sleep, I understand the amount of sleep. What are some of Lynn's tips and tricks to make sure that you go to bed at the right time, get at the right time, make sure you have a great environment? So mm. run, run us through your top five tips. So top five tips, I'm <coughs> going to make these really quick because mm -hmm. we've got um, a few full episodes on sleep. Absolutely. Um, but it is super important, so I don't want to miss them. So the first one is have a regular bedtime. Yes. Okay, so go to bed every day at the same time. Now, we know that there'll be things that keep you up. doesn't matter. Look, aim to have a regular bedtime. And ideally, make that bedtime before 11 o'clock. The reason being, at 11 o'clock, the body will start to think that it's got to stay awake and it will eject adrenaline. It's what will perk you up, yeah. give you second wind, and make you basically wide awake for the next two, three, or four hours. Yeah. So if you miss that 11 o'clock cut off, you could then be tossing and turning and desperately trying to get to sleep until two in the morning. So if you're the quintessential insomniac who says, I don't go to sleep easily, <laughs> yep. try, going, try doing the opposite of what you think. Yes. Try going to bed a lot earlier 
and especially before 11 o'clock. Mm -hmm. So that means you've got a chance of a good window of sleep. The second one, which is arguably even more important, is get up at the same time every single day. Ideally without an alarm. Beautiful if you can do it without an alarm. Yep. Um, but even if you can't, you know, pick a time that works for you. Yes. And the trap that people fall into is they say, ah, I've got to get up early during the week for work, but at the weekend I can get a good lie in. And a lot of executives do this. You know, they're busy, busy, busy during the week. Come Friday night, they're shattered, they go to bed early and they'll sleep through and they'll try and catch up on their sleep Saturday mm -hmm. morning, Sunday morning. The reason it doesn't work, work out and it really messes your routine is that on a morning your body basically gives you a big burst of cortisol. That stress hormone is what wakes you up. Yep. Now that happens, so let's say my, my normal weekday wake time is 6 o'clock in the morning. So about 5 o'clock my body will start to increase the level of cortisol so that I wake up at 6 o'clock. And if that's my habit, then that will happen every day and I should be able to wake up without that alarm clock. Yes. Now then I get to the weekend, I'm dog tired because I've only had a few hours sleep a night and I think to myself, great, I'm going to sleep till 9 or 10 o'clock. <laughs> yes. You still get the cortisol rising. Mm. The cortisol's still rising from 5 o'clock, peaking at 6, so you wake up at 6. Your sleep between 6 and 9 isn't going to be very good because you've got high levels of cortisol. So you're going to keep trying to sleep because you're tired. And you want to. And you want to. But it's not effective. And you'll doze, yeah. but it won't be that nice deep sleep. It won't be the REM sleep. You'll just get some light sleep. Mm -hmm. So it's a bit of rest, yes. but it's not good quality sleep. Even worse, you get back to Monday morning when you've got to wake up early. Your body's now had a couple of mornings where you've slept later. So it now thinks, oh, new habits here. Yep. I'm meant to sleep till nine o'clock. Yep. It doesn't inject the cortisol. It doesn't increase the cortisol at, um, at five, six o'clock in the morning. This time it does at eight, nine o'clock in the morning. So you don't get the wake up hormones. You therefore, you know, your alarm goes off. All of a sudden you're startled out of mm -hmm. the deep sleep and you feel dreadful yep. because your cortisol has come at the wrong time. And that will then you know, affect your sleep, interrupt your sleep for the next two or three nights. Yep. So you probably had bad sleep for five nights out of seven mm. just because you tried to catch up. So, so get, up, get up early on the weekend and then have an afternoon nap. Yeah, but that's right. So napping's a completely separate one and we, and we, we won't talk about napping today, but we've got a whole episode on napping, which is a really cool episode. Yes, um, but we sleep through 20 minutes of at the very least, try to set that regular wake-up time. Yes. And honestly, this is a game-changer. This was a game-changer for me, and yep. I resisted it for years. But once I did it, and I did it consistently for three months, yep. I now couldn't imagine getting up at a different time. Yep. I understand. It's, uh, it is an absolute, and when you, when you do it, it's hard to explain, but when you do it, it's this ritual that you look forward to. You spring out of bed, you look forward to the morning, it's not this drag yourself out of bed because your, your body, your mind, your hormones, your cortisol, everything is geared for that particular time of the day and your body's in sync and it just flows beautifully. It does. It genuinely feels really, really good. So it mm. doesn't matter what time you get to bed, even if you've had a late night, my advice is still get up at that same time every single day. So that's right. the, the second hack. So the PM routine leading into the, the go to bed before 11 at a regular time. The AM routine getting up at the regular time in the morning as easily as possible. Uh, devices. A big one? Uh, no, no, I'm going to do sleep window. Um, oh, as oh, sleep window, yes. yes, yes, yes. So um, this, it's kind of linked. Yep. So everybody's got an ideal sleep window. And what we mean by that is there are certain hours where you get your best sleep. Mm -hmm. And, you know, at the, at the extreme ends of the night, so the start of the night and the end of the night, you may not get such good sleep. Or, um, but there's generally a window in there. Yep. Now, I don't want to say everybody's the same because they're not. Everybody's mm. got a slightly different circadian rhythm. Everybody's got different habits. But in general, the hours between 10 and 2 are the most valuable in the night. So if you're going to skip a few hours of sleep, <laughs> The don't ones don't maybe, skip those ones. Don't skip those ones. Yep. So, you know, the ones perhaps earlier in the morning, so you might get up early to exercise, mm -hmm. you might be a 4.30 riser. You can get away with that if you've slept really well, really soundly between the hours of 10 and 2. Mm -hmm. And some people would even say that between 10 and 2, this magic window, that every hour is worth two hours later on in the night. Interesting. So if you sleep those four hours, 10 till 2, yeah. It's almost as good as eight hours sleep 
if you were sleeping between 2 a.m. and 10. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so you know, you, you're really looking at mm, a mm. really compressed quality sleep. And again, to illustrate this, what I find is I've, when I look at my sleep tracker, for me it's 10.30 till 2.30. But every night, 10.30 to 2.30, I can see that I've had these regular sleep cycles. Yes. I don't generally work during that time. And if I've had that 10.30 to 2.30, I feel amazing the next day. Mm. So I will try to get to bed at 10 o'clock, giving me 30 minutes to get to sleep. Yep. And then I've got my 10.30 till 2.30. <clears> and what <throat> happens after that doesn't really matter, even though I do sleep on till 6. Yes, interesting. All right, devices, please. Devices. So I think this is one that we see and hear a lot about. Um, and it's very simple. Devices emit blue light. Mm -hmm. And blue light is the type of light that our, our brains recognise as morning light. So what we're meant to do naturally on a morning is we're meant to see blue sky. And that blue sky, it comes in through specialised cells in the back of the eye, in the retina. And it's recognised by the brain as it's morning light, therefore it's time for us to wake up. Yep. Our devices all emit blue light. The screens, so computers, TVs, phones, iPads, tablets. Right, yep. um, fluorescent lights but devices especially they all emit blue light mm. and that's being bombarded see you don't often look at a light but you do stare at your screen you Absolutely. stare at your screen without blinking um, and more and more and there's nothing wrong with that in the sense that I do it we all do it and it's the way our world is progressing but because they're bombarding your your eyes with blue light your brain is essentially thinking it's continually daytime yes. it's continually morning so what's going to happen is you're going to get the morning hormones released the body will try and stay awake yeah. so if you're having lots and lots of device time at night and blue light at night then your body and your brain especially is going to get really confused mm. and you will struggle to switch off you'll struggle to get your mind to wind down and go to sleep so I bet everybody has had this experience. You're on your device, two things happen. You're getting the blue lights, you're getting the bright light, you're wide awake, and then an email comes in or a, you know, a message comes in, something you didn't, want to, you didn't want to hear about, something that's annoyed the hell out of you or it's frustrated you. You go to bed, you're right at bedtime, it's come in just before you've put the light off. You know, you just had a last scroll through your news feed or As we last all do. check of your emails. It comes in. A, you're looking at the blue light, and B, it's got your brain activated. You lie down, and you just cannot put it out of your mind. Your, your brain's just whirring away, trying to solve the problem, um, or work out what you're going to do about it tomorrow. Yep. And as a result, you are wide awake. Now, you're wide awake because A, you've, you've actually activated your brain through that, that process of looking at the email or the message. Yep. And secondly, your brain's got wired because you've been blue forcing light. blue light at it. Yep. So... You know, the advice, and it's a really tricky one, very think tricky. very carefully about your device use. Mm -hmm. So, you know, first option is at least put a blue light filter. Mobile phones, iPads, tablets, you can put blue light filters on them. It's built into the operating system. Yeah. Um, things like Macs and PCs, you can put programs like f.lux, um, f.lux. You can put those on, and what they will do is they will take away the blue light when it gets to dusk and they give you a warmer, um, more orange coloured light, which yep. is indicative of evening, of sunset, of time to wind down. Yes. So you can put these blue light filters on, and that's going to do, I think, wonders already. But really think about whether you can put do not disturb on your devices, whether you really have to be scrolling mm. until that last second before you sleep. Yeah. It's giving you that window, isn't it? That window to let your mind and body wind down mm. before you become horizontal. So finding, it, finding what is the right amount of time to switch off the devices, reduce the impact on your mind. So start to think about or start to lessen the work thought mm. and start to wind down, whether it's meditation, music, reading, all those things to prepare your body for, for sleep. I, and I, I, I describe it as creating a gap. Yes. So what you're essentially trying to do is, if you think about a wedge and you think about you've got your work mm. and you've got your sleep or you've got your life and your sleep, and normally, for, for most people, they're sandwiched together. Mm, mm. So I work, I work, I work, I fall into bed. I do life. Yes. Yeah, I've got kids, I'm doing stuff, I fall into bed. There's no gap in between. Yes. So what you're trying to do is you're trying to create a wedge that you basically put between those two, you open it up and you create a gap. Yes. And that gap allows your, your brain to go, aha, phew, yep. the day's done. Yes. 
I can now relax, I can wind down, and as you said, I can go to my sleep mode. Mm -hmm. So it kind of signals to your brain, it's safe now to go to sleep. Yep. Get rid of the stress of the day. That's good, cool. yeah. All right, last one, which is an exciting one. Um, the last hack, and a lot of people will probably overlook this one, is doing a, an audit or checking your sleep environment mm. to make sure it's doing everything possible to give you the best quality of sleep. So run us through your sort of, your, the two or three things you'd look for if you did a sleep audit. So first thing I look for is light. So well, this, artificial. This is my cue. There you go. So my you cue. can. For those people watching, you can see me put on my little glasses. A sleep mask. If you're, if you're tuning in, you probably can't see me hear this, but look at that. Beautiful that. That in your ears. That's it. Could you just stay like that now? I could stay like for days. Excellent. My life would be so much easier. <laughs> yes. So what Mike's doing is he's putting on a sleep mask because in a lot he's of going cases. To sleep. <laughs> In a lot of cases, you can't get rid of all the, the lights. True. If you mm. live in a suburban area, you might have artificial lights outside. Mm. You might not be able to black out your blind, your, your windows. Yep. So you might not be able to get that really dark environment. Easiest tack, especially if you're a busy person traveling and you're sleeping in hotel mm. rooms, you're all over the world, you're on planes, get a really good quality sleep mask, one that doesn't let light in around the nose. Mm. Put that on. And basically that's going to cut out all of that artificial light. Remember the artificial light is the morning light. Mm. So we don't want that going to the brain. Pop the sleep mask on and then that's going to tri tr basically trick us into thinking it's pitch black. Mm. Therefore it's time to go to sleep. And you can wear them in meetings too. You can take them into yeah. them in meetings if you just don't want to see what's going on. Or if you want to have a little sleep in a meeting. <laughs> Pop your earplugs in and it, it, it makes the meeting so much more effective for <laughs> busy people. So you've mentioned your earplugs. Yes. And let me just explain what that's Good. all about. Yeah. Because <laughs> you keep talking. I think that's the biggest one. Yeah, the sound is very, very important. This, this is one that people don't appreciate. Sound wakes us up mm. way more than we think. And even if it doesn't wake us up fully, Disturbs. it drags us from that beautiful yeah. deep sleep, maybe to a light sleep, or it stops us getting into the deep sleep, yep. and it disturbs us. Yes. So if you track your sleep and you notice you're restless, mm. could be because you've got a partner snoring beside you, yes. or you live like, like I do here, there's With a motorbikes. busy road and motorbikes going past. Yes. Um, or you live next to a, a mosque and there's a call to prayer early in the morning. Mm. All sorts of things can disturb us. Simplest hack that I can give anybody is get some of those swimming type of earplugs. They're better than the foam ones. Mm. You mould them into your ears and they're, they're safe to keep in overnight as long as they're nice and big and they're not going to get lost down the ear canal. So don't force them in. Just use them to close off you know, the, um, the ear and you will get significant noise reduction. And Great from, sleep. from that moment onwards, you'll get much better quality mm -hmm. of sleep. So the, uh, the light in the room, the noise in the room, the temperature? Temperature and ventilation. So yes. again, some people are very susceptible to, to the temperature feeling mm. hot or cold. Um, there are lots, again, lots of information around what temperature to use. Generally, the cooler, the better, but you don't want to be waking up cold. So everybody's going to have a comfortable mm. threshold. Um, you know, if, if, if you're a couple and one of you feels the heat and one of you feels the cold, you're going to have to out. work <laughs> that one out. Negotiation. Um, but yeah, you want to have a nice, comfortable sleeping temperature. Colder is generally better for the body. Mm. All right, we have cracked the code behind sleep. So we've looked um, in depth at sleep today and we started this journey on the, the PEAKS formula. We so did. it was P equals EA plus K plus S. And for those tuning in, if you, we've got episodes on each one of those mm, elements that make have. up the peaks for me, which makes up that wellness journey that mm. you can embark on. So thank you, Lynn. Thanks for the little bite-sized chunks of wellness wisdom. And uh, join us again on the Peaks Life next time. Absolutely. And I've got to say, you know, put your comments, mm. put your experience. Tell us, you know, down below, write what your experience is. What's your best sleep hack? Yes. Some maybe that I didn't mention. What works for you? What doesn't work for you? We'd love to hear. Yes. And again, I've got to reiterate, sleep to me is the priority. It will do more for your health than anything else you can possibly think of. Absolutely. Bring on some great sleep.